How to ethically price your home staging services. One of the most frequently asked questions I get from new home stagers who are looking to launch their business is how do I price my services when I've never done this before? I've been in the home staging industry for seven years and within two years I scaled seven figures. I've tried all different types of pricing and finally found something that worked. Today in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you how to find what works for your business and your area and how to start charging what you deserve. Let's dive in. You'll notice that I titled this video about ethically pricing your services. The reason behind that is, unfortunately, there's a lot of people out there who unethically look at how they're going to price themselves. What do I mean by that? Really, there is a three-step process, in my opinion, to work out what is my pricing. The worst way to do it would be to go and inquire to other companies as a fake client to try and get their pricing Personally, for me, that is out of integrity and that is not in my value system to pretend to be someone else to get a quote. Not only is that going to build up one of my fellow home stagers' hope that I am a client, but it's also going to ruin their sort of excitement about a potential quote when it never really was real. So I want to share with you in today's video how not to do that and how to price yourself, price your services in integrity. Let's dive in. So the first step to placing your service is working out how much is my kit going to cost me? Now, when you're looking at costing your kit, you're not going to want to find specific pieces for your kit at this moment, but looking at a ballpark figure for each furniture piece that you're sourcing. So you don't have to find the specific sofa, the specific bed from the specific company. All you have to work out is right, what is my median? What is my average that I will be spending on said kit. Now, once you complete that whole kit and you're clear on the kit's going to cost you, let's say $2,000, then it becomes clear, right, if that kit is going to cost me that, and let's say that I need to cover my expenses in my first install because I have no startup funds to launch my business, I'm going to link you to that video here right now if you're not sure yet on how to launch without any startup funds. But when we do that, we need to make sure if we've got zero, that our client pays us up front and we purchase the kit from that. So if your kit costs you $2,000 to buy, then the first sort of payment you're going to need to receive from a client is $2,000 if you have nothing in your bank account. Now, from there, obviously your kit's going to go in rotation time and time again because a client's going to rent it from you. So do not worry if it does, the first payment does not cover that. But it's just good to know if I have a new kit, this is how much it costs and this is how many stages I would need to do with that kit in order to make that money back. So the second thing you've got to do is do your market research. This is where that ethical approach is going to come into play. There's nothing I hate more than when I hear home stagers are putting in fake quotes to other companies to get their pricing. And it's one of the reasons why I talk about putting your prices on your website because I think transparency is the best policy. So when you are doing your market research, there's a few ways to do this very ethically. Now, first of all, you can go to your competitors in your area. Now, if you don't have many competitors in your area, start to take a wider radius of 20, 30, 40, 50 miles out with where you're based. What I do here is I create a spreadsheet, I link all of their accounts, all of their names, all of their websites, and actually start to list down their pricing. Because when I do this, I can actually start to see, right, okay, so they're maybe at the high end, they're at the low end, where do I want to position myself? Now, the other way to do this ethically, if you don't have enough results purely from just Google or Facebook, there's a few other options. Number one, use our Stager Boss tribe community because I love it when we're in there together and sharing our pricing. That's why the community exists. So we can all help each other. Ask the other members of the tribe, what are you charging in your area? What part of the market are you in? 
Secondly is using Facebook groups where your ideal client would be and discussing, putting a post out or chatting to someone how much they'd be willing to pay or what their perception is of how much it would cost. It's a great way just to get a gut feel for what is happening in the market right now. And then once you've done that market research, you've built out that spreadsheet, it's really important to look at where do I want to position myself in the market? Do I want to position myself at the lower end of the market, the higher end of the market? And even though you might be positioning yourself at the lower end, it doesn't mean you're going to be cheap and low quality. It may just mean you're going to do the lower end properties, but still with an amazing look. So where do you want to position yourself after you've looked at what else is on the market? Now, before I tell you the third point, go click that subscribe button to the channel because I have so much more content that's totally free for you on how to price, launch, grow your home staging business. Go click that button. Now, my third point may be a little bit controversial because it's not scientific, but when I was starting out in my journey, one of the things I had to do was trial and error test. Now, I created Stager Boss and I create these videos, my program, so that I can help fast track and accelerate your journey. And I do that, I help my clients with their pricing inside their program, Staging Business Secrets. But in terms of a video like this, and even just in general, one thing I can't fast track is you finding the exact right pricing for your business. So trial and error is going to be the biggest indicator for you. So what does this look like? If you give a client a price and they immediately come back like, yes, that is like so much cheaper than I thought, maybe you've lowballed it. If you're getting constant no's and oh my goodness, I don't have the budget for that, you may have went in way too high. So by putting out your pricing, I always say when you start out, go as low as you're ever really going to be because you want to build up that experience. You want to get that business. So start by lowballing your offers and then start to build it up slowly, time after time. So if you are ready to really work out the pricing for your services and launch your home staging business, go to ditchthedayjob.com. I've got a seven day free challenge for you that's going to help you say goodbye to that nine to five and replace your nine to five income with your home staging business. Go to ditchthedayjob.com and I will see you there and spend seven days together.